Hi, Louie here from Groundstone. And uh, today we're here at uh, this great rural property where the uh, conventional uh, gravity type of system just failed. So um, with the size of the house, it's a five bedroom and the lot isn't very big. So back in the time period where they didn't have the kind of stringent regulations that they do today, uh, these gravity systems uh, didn't take into consideration an alternate system when uh, this one did fail. So the question is, what do we do when we can't put another conventional gravity system in a tight space? And since this one has failed, we can no longer uh, place in another uh, gravity system because of their huge space requirements. So what do we do? Well, for this type of situation, we have to treat that wastewater more efficiently. And what that does is give us uh, a certain loading rate uh, going into the natural soil. So the, the larger the number on the loading rate, the smaller the field is. And so the cleaner we can get that effluent, less space we require uh, to place that drain field in. So compared to a gravity system, which basically has not very much treatment, the septic tank basically separates all your solids, your fats, and your fluids. Uh, it doesn't really treat the effluent very well. So a type two system is going to aerate and help us give us a, a a higher uh, what's called a loading rate uh, going into the soil. So first we have to see the type of soil that's here. It gives us a certain loading rate of the soil as well. So when the wastewater uh, gets treated by aeration then goes into the uh, type of soils here we're able to calculate um, a basic drain field sizing. So I'll just take you here real quick. Uh, we can quickly see that um, where we dug out this particular area you see a, a bit da a bit of dampness there uh, as we go along every six feet or so we see that the lateral sections uh, are dispersing wastewater up above and then in that garden area as well so what we're doing here now is basically conducting a test pit and some, and some uh, percolation tests. So here's the test pit that I dug. I'm just going to verify the, the type of soil. I'm going to do some perk tests. Right now that's just saturating the hole. And this is gonna give me a loading rate on the soil type once I determine the type of soil type that is on this property. So we're inside the uh, test pit location. I've got uh, roughly uh, six feet, a little bit over. And as you can see, as we go down the test pit, we'll see different horizons. So here we have a more sandy horizon. Here we have a darker brown sandy horizon. And uh, the combinations are a little bit of silt, a little bit of uh, clays. We have to identify how much exactly. So it could fall under the category of a sandy loam or a loamy sand, uh, different color, different textures. Uh, in between uh, this horizon, the darker horizon, and, um, and this pin here, we've identified uh, a clay barrier. And now this becomes uh, very restrictive. So if I were to add water to it, it would turn into, um, I can make it into a worm, I can uh, ribbon it. Now there's a little bit of sand mixture, but mostly clay, as you can see the difference in color. It's more of a gray color. And as we go further down, we can see that we're hitting more sandy type soils. So I've taken some uh, soil samples in baggies and uh, because we've identified this more restrictive layer, we have to ensure that we design properly so that before the effluent travels from uh, the surface all the way down, when it meets this layer, it can no longer permeate down towards the sand layers very quickly. So what it does is go horizontally. And so we wanna make sure that that wastewater is well treated before it hits this restrictive layer. Keep telling yourself that. So after we've established the loading rates and uh, the field sizing, we made our calculations based on the, the soil loading rates and the uh, quality of the effluent uh, getting um, dispersed into that soil type. Uh, we've now sized our uh, what's called the RAT unit or our aeration treatment unit. So here is the outlet basically for the uh, towards the pump tank. 
Uh, this is going to be our aeration port. And then over on this side is where our septic tank is going to lead into. So the outlet of our current uh, septic tank uh, that we're going to use below will feed this unit right here. Uh, we've got a trash tank that is part of this unit. And then on this other side, uh, we've got the aeration excavated. Now we're just going to put our ATU unit right inside. Now that we placed our ATU unit, I'm just going to tie it in to the uh, existing septic tank right there. This section here will add as an additional trash tank to add extra volume to the home. And then uh, this area here will be for the aeration. So we've got a compressor that leads into the other slot over there. Now we're going to dig out the uh, pump tank area so that this displaces into another tank after this. And then uh, from that pump chamber, that pump will drive everything we need to the field below. So down below there, you can see I've staked everything out. That's where it's going to lead to. That's our dispersal area. So it's a rather tight space. And that's why we're required to uh, make sure that the wastewater is a little bit better treated so we can accommodate a tighter space. So that there is the existing septic tank and it's draining into this trash tank here. If we follow along, you'll see that that other trash tank carries over to this end of the ATU unit. And this is where all the aeration takes place. So the air travels in through here, down through that piping network. And then our outlet pipe goes into the pump chamber, which drives everything down to the field. So right now we're just drying our force main from the pump tank and delivering it over to our field area. So we just finished excavating and uh, putting some rock into our seepage bed area here. And up above is where we're going to have our septic tank, our ATU unit, and our pump tank. It's going around the property and delivering it into this seepage bed right here. So now we've finished uh, placing rock in our seepage bed area. We finished uh, drilling the holes and the laterals. Now we're just putting the orifice shields. There's our manifold. And then we just have to connect that manifold to the force main going up to the house uh, towards the pump station. So now we're just gonna run our squirt test. We're just uh, plugging in the pump, just checking our orifices. So everything looks pretty good. We got uh, over a five foot squirt height. So now we just put uh, about two inches of uh, rock cover over our uh, orifices and our laterals. So we have ourselves a rock bed now. Now we just put in the uh, fabric over there. And then we can start to backfill all this stuff. So here we have the air blower. It's connected to the AT unit here. Trash tank. Got running our electrical. And there's a pump station. Uh, we just put our fabric over top of the rock. Keep the sand from infiltrating the uh, top of the rock and going into our dispersal area.